You are listening to 17 Karat K-Pop, the podcast that's a little bit of everything with a K-Pop twist. From pop culture critiques to the history of K-Pop to interviews with people in the K-Pop industry and K-Pop artists themselves, to concert and album reviews, to a deep dive into the discographies of different K-Pop artists, to K-Pop news updates, to stories about the music industry more broadly, this show tries to cover everything about K-Pop and K-Pop as it applies to the larger music and concert scenes. Visit 17 kpopweeplycom for more information about the show. That's 17-C-A-R-A-T-K-P-O-P dot W-E-E-B-L-Y dot C-O-M. Hello everybody and welcome back to 17 Karat K-Pop. Today on the show, we're going to do something a little bit different. This isn't like a regularly occurring segment on the show or anything like that. This is kind of a, just a goofy one-off episode today. I might do a sequel episode at some point if that's a popular option. We are going to look at the most noteworthy K-pop band and fandom names. I was originally looking at about 500 that I had just brainstormed off the top of my head, and then I narrowed it down to the top 100 best, worst, and just in general noteworthy band and fandom names. Before we get to the list, though, I just want to make super, super clear from the onset of this episode that it is supposed to be just light and fun. We can have joking heated debates about which fandom names actually deserve to be in the good or bad category here. It's not about the bands at all or the members most of the time the artists have no say in their band name that's it's just chosen for them by the company so please know that while i roast these names or praise these names it has nothing to do with the artists themselves or the band some of my favorite bands i have to roast their names because they're not great band names frankly or the fandom names weird and then there are groups that I'm not a big fan of, but I will heap praise onto them today because it's a very clever fandom name or whatever. It has nothing to do with the artists. I'm not coming for anyone, hating on anyone. Like, it's all just fun and solely about the names here. Second thing I'd like to say right from the start of this episode is that I apologize in advance for any mispronunciations in band or fandom names. I'm pretty sure I've got them all down pat, but some of them I still slip up a bit on, especially for the artists that are like first gen or early second gen k-pop groups because that was before i got into k-pop so some of these groups i'm less familiar with and so if i'm pronouncing something wrong i apologize for that but i think i figured it out if you're not a k-pop fan just a quick reminder and you just listen to this episode because you're just into music or whatever quick reminder that k-pop band names sometimes they are spelled like an acronym like with dots between the letters and other times they're spelled like a word but it's the opposite. So for example, like ACE, they spell their name A period C period E. And so it is kind of an acronym, but you just say it like ACE. You don't say ACE is the name of the band. And sometimes it's vice versa where a group looks like they should have periods between the words because it's actually an acronym, but they don't. So anyway, so there's a lot of ways that I may pronounce it wrong just in terms of that because of how sometimes that's it's not always what it seems when you first look at some of these names. So without further ado, let's get right to this list and we're going to start with my picks for the best. So the first category we're going to talk about are the fandom names that go with the sense of exclusivity. You're part of a special community. NCT has to be my number one pick. These are in no particular order, but they're number one today. I really love fandom names that make me feel part of an exclusive group. It just provides the sense of community and pride in being a fan. And definitely one of the artists who does that the best is NCT. NCT is a band name I honestly was not a big fan of at first. Neo Culture Technology is what it stands for, so okay, whatever. We are the N citizens, and I just love being able to call myself an N citizen and feeling like I'm part of that. That's what the point that dr is driven home for me whenever there's a live performance for NCT or from just some entertainment in general when they bring N City to life and N City then is suddenly it's this whole place. It's this whole place with giant this giant background during the performance or the special effects or whatever. But they bring a setting to life so it doesn't feel like you're just watching a performance. It feels like you're in the city, in N City. It's like its own escape. I'm not going to rant as usual about NCT music being an escape. Again, today I've done that a lot on the show already, and you can read my blog posts for more on that. But I'm just bringing it up now to really bring home the fact that their fandom name is really special because it's 
And it's also just smart marketing because it does make me feel very proud to, you know, wear uh, and citizen merch and feel like I've got my of official, you know, citizenship. It makes it more feel more permanent to be a fan and like I'm truly part of something special. I just love what they've taken with three letters so much. NCT, NCity, and then they created a whole city out of that. That's actually really clever. There's also a great side of this for my fellow tinfoil hat wearing theorists about music video universes and the layered meanings within them and the easter eggs and yada yada yada. The subunits of NCT have possible hidden meanings in there with 127 being the longitudinal coordinates of Seoul, but also I have my whole other theory about NCT 127 and what that number actually represents that we already talked about on a previous NCT talk. And then there's way V and the V stands for the visions. I've done deep dives before about what that vision is that they're seeing. So anyway, all to say that the fact they've created such investment and in theorizing in fans like me to spend hours on end dissecting things with just giving us prompts like that, like three letter prompts and saying here you go and here's a number to go with it, dissect this. It's just very impressive to me how they made their band and fandom name be so buzzed about in that way. Some artists go even beyond creating this imaginary city for us to mentally escape into. They create a whole other planet for us to escape into, like XO. The fans for XO are the XOLs, the L is for love, they say. Each get our own exoplanet, essentially, or get to pick which exoplanet we want to escape onto. But there's a whole out of this, literally out of this world component to XO's music video storyline. I also like the band name XO because it lends itself to a lot of puns, and I'm a pun enthusiast. Exodus, exact, etc. Then there's Luna, named after the first Hangul letter that is a part of each syllable of their Korean name, with the a bridge symbol looking like an N and a triangle symbol looking like the A. The phrase those Hangul letters are taken from is Girl of the Month, and that is what happened because Luna had this long rollout period of a pre-debut project where each member was introduced to the world one and after the other before the whole group made a debut as one group. Members of the Luna fandom are the Orbits, and they let us each create our own place to shine basically in the sky where the Orbits, we create a buzz around Luna, or we get a topic training about them, we get them an award, get them radio play, whatever accomplishments Orbits are doing on their behalf, basically what PR work Orbits are doing on their behalf, that word of mouth advertising for them is we are getting paid in the form of stars in the sky where they will send us text alerts or tweets or things like that and you get updates on your phone saying thanks Orbit for what you've done, here are the new coordinates for a new star in the sky dedicated to you. It's all like part of this big computer game of sorts where you can see your, your coordinates in the sky compared to other orbits and how you're all up in outer space. It's just a very, very, very much a... It's both a cool, cute escape to feel like you're part of something special and part of this world bigger than yourself at the same time, but it also, I think, has this appeal because it leans on this aesthetic of computer game playing. So if, you, if you're if you a millennial or Gen Z and you've been kind of growing up on, maybe not Gen Z, but growing up with PC games, this has that old school feel while still being modern and new and interesting. Alexa's fans are called the AI Troopers, which just makes me think of G.I. Joe, which is funny. And AI refers to the artificial intelligence that is a part of Alexa's music video storyline. Remember, hers is with ZB Label, her company, playing the role of like a villain in the sci-fi world, and so she has recruited her AI Troopers to help her on this journey. Big Bang, I think, is a great name for a band just on its own. And VIPs is the name of their fandom, which I also just really like. Block B, I really like that name for a band, and I know it may sound just weird and random, but I like what they did with it. They really milked it for all it's worth with, like, the Blockbuster album and other puns like that. And their fandom was the BBC, the Block B Club, also called the Honey Bees because their fandom colors are black and yellow. I like when there's multiple, there are multiple ways fans define themselves. Lastly, Stray Kids. Their fandom is the stay, and their phrase that goes with it is you make stray kids stay. They also say a lot, stay, don't stray. I love a catchphrase. If you've got a cute catchphrase, 
about your fandom that will automatically give you brownie points in my book for this list. A great way to show the connection between artists and fans helping each other out just on a really deep level, not just with PR, but with, you know, emotional support. It can be very vulnerable to be a singer and release your music to the world, and that validation is, you know, what keeps them staying. What keeps them from walking away from from all of the pressures of fame because they see the positive impact they're having. So they make stray kids, people who feel like outsiders, feel like staying together. I also like this name because it helped inspire the name of my regularly occurring segment on the show, Stay Tuned. More quickly now, I want to run through some of my favorite K-pop band and fandom names just for being cute. That is it. There's no deeper reason. I just think these names are so cute. Bestie is a girl group, and their fandom is the Bestiny. G Friends fandom is the Buddies. Fans of Oh My Girl are called the Miracles. Fans of Super Junior are called ELFs, Elfs, Everlasting Friends. Blackpink's fans are the Blinks, which is basically a shortened version of Black and Pink, but on its own, Blinks I just think is a cute name for a fandom. Eyes One's fans are the Wise Ones, which I, my inner pun enthusiast, absolutely went nuts over. Ace's fandom is the Choice. Ace is actually an acronym for Adventures Calling Emotions, which I kind of like too. Sunmi's fandom is Mianae, which translates to Sunmi's home or Sunmi's family. Ha Sun Woon's fans are the Ha Nul. Nul means always and Ha Nul means sky. So you're like the sky always with him, always watching over him. And also it's because Ha Sun Woon's nickname is a cloud. Lastly, there's Holland and his Harlings, aka Holland Darlings, mixed together. Fun fact, Holland actually chose his stage name after the first country to legalize gay marriage because he is one of the only openly LGBTQ plus K-pop idols. A name becomes one of my favorites if it has a double meaning depending on the language, and that is the case with a few of these on this part of the list. Monsta X, their fans are the Mon Bebe, which is French for my baby, and Red Velvet's fans are the Reveloves. Reve means dream in French, and the Reve Festival was actually the name of their latest album trilogy. So Reve Love is meant to be a term for the people who are ready to love Red Velvet and make their dreams come true as artists. Red Velvet in general I think is a cool name for a girl band too. Astro is star in Spanish, so that's where they got that name. But I also think, I'm just going to throw out this pitch idea, Astro. Please, I think this lends itself to having an Astrobots concept. Maybe please do a robot concept for your next comeback. Just throwing that idea out there. A cool cyborg mini movie of sorts. Anyway, but Astro is apparently just their name because it's star in Spanish. Fandom is Aroha, which is basically an abbreviated way to say Astro hearts all fans. Got7 got their name because it's seven members. And so the fandom is I Got7, but also Agases. And this I find really interesting because it led to some interesting fan discourse online about how offensive it is or which... When you are I Got 7, when do you progress to the level of Agase? Agase is viewed as the more desirable term, which means baby birds, basically. And the, that goes with the whole aesthetic of Got 7 with the baby bird-shaped light stick detail and everything like that. Speaking of JYP entertainment artists, I really like the name Twice for a girl group, and the fandom is The Once. What I really like about this, and is so funny to me, is when a group also has like an anti-fandom name, so like there's a specific term we use for the haters. So for twice, the onces are the fans, and the anti-fans are the thrices, which definitely sounds like an undesirable term to have applied to you. It's kind of like with BTS in the army, and then there's like the armchairs, or sometimes the armpits, depending on how mature you are. It's always funnier when there's a name for... The trolls online. Tara, my punny self just loves. It's I just think it's clever. It's T hyphen A R A. Tara meant to represent, of course, a tiara, a crown. There, it's interesting because actually a lot of K-pop groups do this, where they have a different fandom name depending on which country they're being marketed in. And so in Korea, the fans are the queens, but in Japan, they prefer sweet treasures. Time for my more polarizing favorites that it doesn't seem like everyone totally agrees on if it's cute or just weird or what, but I personally think they're very cute names. Fans of Wikimiki are called the Keeling, K-I hyphen L-I-N-G. Wikimiki 
the, you know, the word key comes to mind when you say that. So then fans are like the keylings, the key rings is another way to view it, like the keychains that are there for them. And also it's because the ling comes from darling, which is a cute double meaning, I think. Then there's Rocket Punch, who took the ket from rocket and the ch from punch to make catchy. So it's catchy, which is a, also a rough translation in Korean to mean attractive. Bandit, spelled B-V-N-D-I-T, that stands for be ambitious and do it. Be ambitious, letter N, do it. And the fandom is Bandibol, which means firefly in Korean, and is spelled the band name with a B-U-L at the end. Chunha's fans are the Byolharang, and Byolha means to shine like a star, the Harang means to fly together. So you're flying together, you're the shooting stars together, you're helping fulfill each other's dreams. A lot of artists really think about that aspect of the fandom name, making fans feel like their 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 support and encouragement is fuel for the artist and does not go underappreciated. 21 they also pronounce their name 2-N-E-1 sometimes because that's how it's spelled. Number 2-N-E, number 1. The fandom is the Black Jacks, which may sound random, but 21 is actually the highest score you can get in the game of Blackjack, which is why that's their, that's their fandom name. A-T's is a way of saying basically A to Z or a teenager Z, referencing that youthful spirit that they have in their music. And the fandom are the A-Tiny, well, A-Tiny, but... I like to say a tiny, I think it's cuter. It's ATs mixed with destiny. Noir is a band who used the term for black in French, and Lumiere are the is the name of the fandom, meaning light in French, and Lumiere just makes me think of Beauty and the Beast, the Disney version at least, with the keep talking candelabra and whatever. So it just a cute image comes to mind when I think of them thanking their Lumieres for the help. Speaking of Disney references. CLC is short for Crystal Clear, and their fandom name is the Cheshire, kind of like the Cheshire Cat, which brings to mind their songs like No and Devil. CLC definitely has that Cheshire Cat attitude about them in a good way. And it's also an, a nod to the group's logo, which is of a cat. The Rose, which I just think on its own is a great name for a band, their fandom is the Black Rose or Black Roses. It's a fandom name, actually, that they chose less than a month after their official debut, and they chose it themselves. Black roses are meant to symbolize devotion, but they can also symbolize a rebirth. Either way, it's a good thing to be called a black rose. BTS has one of my all-time favorite names for a band. It translates to Bantan Sonyeondan, that translates to Bulletproof Boy Scouts, because their whole aesthetic was always, you know, we are bulletproof, that's their concept and that's what their name is officially, Bulletproof Boy Scouts, but it translates to BTS. They tried to make something happen a few years ago, but it was definitely like a trying to make fetch happen moment, although fetch actually did happen, so that's probably a bad example, but you know what I mean. They were trying to get it to, you know, say their English name is beyond the scene or behind the scenes or whatever, but that's not really going to take off ever, I don't think. I, I hope not. It's, it's enough on its own to just refer to them as BTS or the Bulletproof Boy Scouts. The fandom is then aptly called ARMY because the Bulletproof reference and we are their army there for them. The BTS army just does feel like the perfect fandom name for them because it is like a full army. It is a huge collection of people around the world. And ARMY is actually an acronym too for adorable representative MCs for the youth. And that's what we are. By being conveyors of BTS's messages and fighters for their views and values, we are conveying the feelings and thoughts of the youth because that's their authenticity in their music being uh, projected through us. My favorite name for a band, I have to be super biased and pick 17 because that number now has special meaning to me for the show and everything. And it's just, to me, I don't know, I kind of like it for no apparent reason. I also like the carrot, C-A-R-A-T, being our fandom name. Again, because of the show, but also we're like 17 carat diamonds to them, and that's a cute a cute reference to their diamond logo and the fact fans are precious to them. Their name is 17 really because it's 13 members plus 3 subunits plus 1 fandom, the carrots. 13 plus 3 plus 1, 17. They were actually going to have more members in the group than 13 members, but... We talked about that before on the show, so we won't go into that history today. My first category of names that are the worst K-pop band names and fandom names 
has to do with the artists who just didn't think it through, I don't think. They are just using a term or a reference to something in pop culture, probably not as they intended it to come off, but it just didn't sit well, at least with me. So, number one, AOA, which stands for Ace of Angels. They chose their fandom name Elvis, but eventually they started saying AOE, Ace of Elvis. They said that because they said, you know, Elvis is this big iconic figure, and we want to be viewed as like iconic groundbreakers paving the way, making a huge impact in the industry. So I guess I get that, that they want to have a similar level of cultural impact. But Elvis was not worth, I would argue he's not super worthy of that king status, at least just as a human outside of the music, because he was quite the womanizer, a misogynist. He was not a great dude, so I would not want to be associated with him as this role model figure. Another bad name for a group K-N-K, and the fandom name is Tinkerbell. Technically, they said their name is from the word knock, or K-pop knock, like they're knocking on the door of K-pop, ready to make their presence known in the industry. They said they came up with the fandom name Tinkerbell just because they were watching Peter Pan one day, and they were thinking about how Tinkerbell is this great protective character, so their fans can be viewed as like the protectors of them, that Tinkerbell is there to protect them. A couple of things about the backstory of Tinkerbell that often get overlooked. One is that she was actually first called Tippy Toe. In the very first version of Peter Pan as a story, when it was just a play and not like a Disney movie, she was just called Tippy Toe, which is not as cute as Tinkerbell. Second of all, she was super, super jealous. In the Disney movie and original versions, like, now that she has her whole movie franchise and toy line and everything, kids view her as, like, just this cute, fun character, but she was mean. She was just so jealous of Wendy and Peter's friendship, and she wanted Wendy out of the picture so much, she basically almost had a hit job done on her, because basically what happens in the Disney-fied version of events is that Captain Hook basically tells her, please tell me where Wendy is, or, you know, where they are just because I'm coming for Wendy. I'm not coming for Peter Pan. I'm just coming for Wendy, so tell me where they are. So she told him their location, assuming that he would go basically kill Wendy, but he was like, hi, you fell for it, I'm actually getting Peter. So then Tinkerbell saves Peter's life, and he's grateful, of course, but it's like, apparently we're gonna overlook the fact that she didn't care about Wendy's life, so that is something worth remembering. And there's the fact that she has this cute message about fairy dust and sprinkling love and trust or whatever the phrase is around her, which is great, but it's interesting that it actually kind of has a sinister or just sad backstory because she actually, they had to incorporate fairy dust into Tinkerbell's backstory because so many fans of the original Peter P Pan show were getting injured, falling off their beds after jumping and thinking they could fly like her, that they had to say, oh, actually, you can't fly. It's, you know, you can only do it if you have the fairy dusting. If you don't have that, it's not going to work, so please don't hurt yourselves jumping off the bed. So many kids needed surgery for jumping off their beds to try to imitate Tinkerbell that they had to add fairy dust and the fairy component to her story more than ever. So anyway, not exactly a fandom title I would want for myself. TVXQ, the actual letters spelled out in Korean roughly translate to the rising gods of the East, and so with the gods reference, it's natural that they wanted to reference mythology, and so the fandom is Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is viewed as beautiful, so I guess that's a compliment, but also... Cassiopeia is, the backstory of her is basically, there's a constellation named after her, and she was basically this queen character who bragged so much about her beauty. Her bragging about her looks just kept happening so much that it irritated that sea monster Poseidon to the point where he basically destroyed a kingdom in rage. So she was so egotistical that she upset Poseidon to the point where he destroyed a city because he was so irritated by her her blabbering on about it. And then she sacrificed her child to the sea monster Poseidon too, so there's that. Similarly, FT Island, standing for Five Treasure Island, named their fandom the Prima Donna in its real definition. When you're viewed as having Prima Donna behavior, it's not exactly a compliment. It means, basically, it could mean the lead singer in an opera just called the Prima Donna, but it's also been used over time to just someone who's very temperamental, someone who has an oversized ego, thinks too much of themselves. Other issues with definitions I have, 
One group named Varsity, their fandom is the Union. That term Union has so many layers to unpack in it, so many different definitions and contexts that just naming a fandom the Union, I just, there's a lot there that I don't know if that's what they meant, but I, I know I'm over reading it, but if, if you have to look too much into a fandom name, maybe it's not the best one. And also, aren't all fandoms technically unions? Because a union is defined as like a joining together of people for a similar interest or goal. So every fandom, right? <laughs> so every fandom is a union, so I don't know. Not a fan of that one. Vermuda is a group who named their fandom the Triangle, which is a reference to the Bermuda Triangle, which is not exactly the best reference, though, because the Bermuda Triangle is where planes go missing and where people go missing, and... Not exactly an inspiring place to be referenced and likened to. Zexkies, spelled S-E-C-H-S-K-I-E-S, -E -E Zexkies, their fandom, well, their name is Six Crystals, basically, in German, and so the fandom is the Yelkies. The thing is that the actual literal translation of Zexkies in German would be pebbles, not crystals, which really puts a damper on the, the compliment you're giving someone. Hotshot is a boy band whose fandom name is the Hot Pole, H-O-T-P-L-E. In their defense, Hotshot is actually a positive thing in Korea. Like, if you're called a Hotshot, that's not actually an insult. That's a good thing. You're viewed as, like, an up-and-coming hot new artist. But in the USA, if you're called a Hotshot, you're viewed as too egotistical. And that's kind of like a diva is another term for Hotshot, at least here. I will say, though, in their defense also... The name may come from their debut single, Take a Shot, which refers to just trying to be the best at something, which that's not ba a bad thing, of course. And they also have re really tried in the early days of their career to, you know, ha you know, develop that fan base. They held 20 different fan signs across Korea in their early career days, for example. They've really tried. I just, I respect the hustle they've been putting into cultivating that fan base, even if I'm not a fan of the name of it. They also started right out of the gate trying to promote themselves through different platforms, not just through offline fan meetings, but through a video series they had called Hot Shot Volumes, and they also had webtoons and stuff. So they really, from, they came out of the gates ready and determined to work super hard to get some recognition. There are a couple band names that I don't care for because the abbreviations are too interchangeable with other things. UNVS is a group but it, that also means the UN Volunteers, United Nations Volunteers, but this band is UNVs or UNVS. They say it's short for universe. Their fandom is then UN Us. Then there's B2B, which for years I thought was B-T-O-B, but no, it's pronounced B2B. So I, I would argue that the T and the O should be lowercase to clarify, but they're not, but I digress. Which stands for Born to Beats. But actually, B2B is back to business also. Although that phrase maybe isn't used in Korea, so maybe they didn't think of that. But the fandom name I like, which is the Melodies. Some band names I'm just going to say and not give an explanation because I feel like they speak for themselves about why, yeah, that was not exactly the best idea for a band name. Super M, we, we know what that looks and sounds like on and looks like on merch. Big Flow whose fandom is The Wave, The Boss, and The Masters. The fans are the masters of The Boss, which is supposed to be an acronym for the boys of super space, but Blue D, B-L-U-E period D, A-N-S, supposed to be angel and soul, but just letter A, letter N, letter S, with the fandom being answer A-N-S-E-R. Wanho's fandom is The Weenies, the supposed to be like we need each other, but you know, weenie. DKB, which is supposed to just be dark brown eyes, but Dia, D-I-A, and their fandom is just Dia backwards, which is AIDS. That one was actually a fan voted choice, so I have extra follow-up questions on that one. Pristine, which is in Korea, they call it like Pilusatine is kind of how you'd pronounce it there with spelling it out a bit more. Pilusatine, Pilusatine, but Pristine, however you want to say it, their fandom is the Highs, capital H, capital I, and then GHS, because they hope fans will like rise to the top with them in life, basically, is what is how they explained it. And the name itself is a combination of prismatic and elastine, which means like flawless strength. Some members of this group rebranded as Hanapia, and then their fandom was UBY, 
And then Hanapia was supposed to be an abbreviated way to say hi, new amazing utopia, Dustin and the Stan. Their name actually Dustin derives from the German word that means like valiant, courageous warrior. So everyone calls themselves a Stan of someone these days. So just calling the fandom the Stan, if it just, I feel like that's a bit outdated now because no one will know who you're talking about. There are some fandom names that I just don't care for because they're too similar or band names just because they're too similar to things that I think of for other groups. There was a group, N-Sonic, which was short for Neo-Sonic, and Neo is the whole branding of NCT now. Fans of the girl group Pink Fantasy were upset because their fandom is Love It, and Kravity just added a Y and said Love It is their fandom name, which is very, very similar, and I do personally get upset. I feel like my fandom names are co-opted or just copied a bit and so I understand their frustration there and I wish they would have made it a different thing. I mean, what about the momentum? If we're talking about gravity, like gravity, well, they should have just called their fans like the momentum or the, I don't know, the space rocks, Some something. There's a lot there. These next few I've decided I don't like because the fandom name or the band name is just way too similar to a word that I use outside of the K-pop context, and so it's just confusing and weird. Miss A, which I kind of think is a punny thing to do, M-I-S-S, and then space letter A, Miss A, like Missy. And the fandom, though, is Say A. They want fans to, like, shout out Say A at the concerts is why they chose that. Fiesta, which is, like, Fiesta, but star at the end. And the Let's, the fandom is Let's. Espa's fandom is the my, like my precious friend is how they described it, but it's just my. Similarly, Park Jihoon's fans are May, which is his birthday month, and it also is supposed to represent the fact that the word May implies a world of possibility, but the word May is used in a lot of contexts, of course. And even more context is the word if, and in fact made their fan name, fandom name ifs, Supposed to be like Infect fans, IF, if for short, but still. The boy band Target obviously brings to mind the store Target. Pentagon obviously brings to mind the Pentagon, and their fandom is the universe. And then there's Triple H, which is also the name of a pro wrestler and actor. Fun, embarrassing fact, I didn't know that at first. I assume when people brought up Triple H, they were talking about the K-pop group. No, apparently it's been the name for a famous wrestler, actor, person. This next category of band names that I am not a fan of goes to the ones for just bizarre food or drinks. Vromance chose the name Vrockly for their fans, the V being for the number five here. That, which is also why the van name itself is like romance, but with a V in the front. And the fandom name, they said it's broccoli, or broccoli rather, because broccoli is seen as having five key benefits when you eat it, like giving people energy and stuff. So there's like symbolism there and, you know, sustaining this group. Then there's the group Grayish, which they said they chose because gray never loses its original color, no matter what you mix it with. So that's kind of... That kind of makes me like the band name a bit more, because that, that's kind of a cool way to look at it, but then the fandom name is The Syrup. Yoon Jisun named his fandom The Bobble, which stands for Grains of Rice, that's what it translates to. La Bum named their fandom The Lattes. Mamamoo, they named their fandom The Moo Moos, which means radish in Korean, and they even have radish-themed light sticks. And they also said that they chose that name for their band because it's meant to bring to mind the sounds a baby makes, implying that they make music in that basic instinctual way too. Like straight out of the gate, they're going to create music that's good organically on its own, give birth to great music, I guess. Kind of has a Cabbage Patch Kids vibe to it, the fact that they're talking about giving birth to great music and then getting support from their fellow radishes. Lastly, there was a group, Milk. M-I-L-K, M period, I period, L period, K, which stands for Made in Lovely Kin. Some unnecessary weird acronyms. The boy being Tracing stood for Teen Rising Champion in a New Generation, and they named their fans the Champions. B1A4 is supposed to represent like be the one all for one is one way to look at it. But B1A4 is also their name because one member has type B blood and four have type A, so B1A4. And the fandom is the Banas, B-A-N-A-S. CN Blue stands for Codename Blue, 
and the B in blue is for burning, then there's lovely, untouchable, and emotional. Each member chose an adjective to describe their approach to life or just their personality to make the acronym C in blue. And their fandom is the voice, blue plus voice. Elris also used that with each member choosing a word to describe them. Elris then stands for excellent, lovely, rainbow, innocent, and sister. And the fandom then is the Belris or Bulris, B L R I S, which is just supposed to be bliss plus Elris. B A P stands for best, absolute, perfect. And the fandom then is the babies, B A B Y, standing for baby always behind you. E V O L, pronounced evil, and it stands for effective voice of ladies. M Black, M B L A Q, stands for Music Boys Living in Absolute Quality, and they named their fans the A-pluses. TRAX, T-R-A-X, stands for Typhoon of the Rose Attack on Christmas. LC9 stands for League of Competition, with no further details added. Baby Vox stands for Baby Voices of Expression, and their fans are the Baby Angels, which, okay, that's a little cute. HOT, H-O-T, High Five of Teenagers. And the fandom is Club Hot, and they eventually started calling themselves the White Angels, like White Hot. Double S501, spelled SS501, their fandom is the Triple S, and they are viewed as like the superstars, and the five are one forever, like the band is five members forever is what that number means for them. DMTN stands for Desire Motivation Timing Now. I don't know either. And the weirdest part is that it's pronounced Dalmatian. DMTN is Dalmatian. UKIS stands for Ubiquitous Korean International Superstar. And the fandom is called the Kiss Me. Which, yeah. Teen Top, Teenager and Body Emotion Next Generation Talent Object Praise. Yeah, again, I don't know. Reigns is a way of taking some of the letters from saying rapturously inspiring boys with a Z and combining them to say Reigns, and then the fandom is Reinser, with Reigns with an E-R at the end. Vanner stands for Victory and Banner, and then VVS is the name of their fandom, VVS referring to very, very slightly. So the fandom is the very, very slightly, which they say is a reference to the clarity level of a true diamond and how you have to be very careful to create a diamond out of coal or whatever. Kim Jae-hwan named his fandom The Wind. The Win plus D and the D is supposed to represent how you're developing and they're supposed to be different. So like Win is representing something totally different than the D for developing and both have nothing to do with actual wind. But there, there's just a mixed metaphor there. Then there's Che Su Hwan who named his fandom The Lake which stands for Love, Always, Kindness, Enthusiasm. More band names I'm not a fan of are the ones given to groups formed on reality shows because they're often just pretty pull them out of a hat or just come up with it in five minutes. They have that feel to them, like they just threw the name of the reality show onto the group or something like that. Sometimes that works, like Winner, that as a band name, that's fine to like give it to them, or Stray Kids, that was the name of the show they were on. Actually, Monster X was on No Mercy, and fun fact, their name as a band was almost No Mercy, which actually is a pretty good band name, but in other cases, them mixing their reality show name with a band name just is not exactly a, a cute name for a group. From Produce 101 was Wana One, and then their fandom was the Wanobles. From the show The Unit and the company, the Unit Culture Industry Company, was the group Unity, spelled U-N-I period T, which, I, okay, that's kind of punny. And then the fandom was Wu Yu. W-O-O and then the letter U was supposed to be a combination of the word U in Korean, Wu, and then U for us. So, us with you, unity. From is nine, from I-S underscore nine, basically like promise nine. And the fandom is the flover, fl- like clover mixed with the fromis. Lastly, X1 and the fandom won it. The X1 is supposed to be referencing 10 members and the one member who got the X X ranking on the show. So everyone would get a number except one got like a a mystery number. And so the X1 is supposed to represent the number 11, which was the number of members in the band.
More B and E fandom names that I am not a big fan of. Snooper is meant to represent what is higher than super at an even greater level than super is a snooper. Their fandom is the swings, which is meant to represent wings with an S for snooper. So your snooper's wings essentially. What looks like it's spelled or pronounced dice with D one C E is actually the once or da once which was a fan-voted name, and then the fandom is D-only, spelled D-O-N number one Y. G-O-D, G dot O dot G stands for Groove Overdose. SF9 is Sensational Feeling 9, with their fans being the fantasies. V-A-V stands for Very Awesome Voice, and the fandom is the Vamps. Fun fact, actually, V-A-V's fandom was going to be the Moonlights, or it was rumored to have been the Moonlights, before they confirmed actually it is Vamps. And actually, I think Vamps is a better one, so there's that. B-I-G stands for Boys in Groove, and the fandom is the Beginning. Finkel stands for Fin Killing Liberty, and refers to standing against the oppression of freedom in any form. Also, they reference the word Fin because it means end in both French and Spanish. Basically saying it's the end of killing liberty. It's the end of getting, it's the end of oppressing freedom. And then the fandom is Pinky because they also were referred to sometimes as Pinkle instead of Finkle. Secret Number, we've talked about their fandom name before, being Locky, Lock and Key, but pronounced like Rocky, but it's spelled Locky, which is fine, but I wanted something like the Code Breakers or something more baddie. Hyuna actually didn't get to announce her fandom name until 10 years after her debut, which was disappointing. And after 10 years, they decided to go with A-ing, A hyphen I-N-G. Empire stands for music and vampire together for no particular reason. Donkeys, I do respect their use of the pun because they have the whole Donkey Town release and everything, but still on its own, I don't know. Donkeys, they actually signed to Donyo Entertainment, which is where it comes from. And then the fandom is Donari, which stands for those who are lovesick for each other, basically. D Crunch is short for Diamond Crunch, and Diana is the name of their fandom. The Daya meaning like di- short for diamond, and the Na actually means me in Korean, like me a diamond, I'm a diamond. Then there's O N F, which is actually pronounced on and off. Yeah, it doesn't look like that, but that's what O N F is supposed to represent the mixing together of on and off. And then the fandom are the Fuse, which is meant to mix O N F with Muse where they just took the last letter of their band name and added it to Muse, replaced the M with the F. Now to specifically some fandom names, where sometimes the band name's fine, but then the fandom name is not so much to me. The Mfect named their fandom the Mfectable, and I don't know. Madtown's fans are called Mad People. My Name named their fandom My Girl, so... Not a fan of that assumption that their whole fan base is girls. 2AM, that has an interesting story because that band said they named themselves 2AM to reflect that time of day and how that's when people get very just deep in thought and reflective. And so that's how they wanted their ballads to sound. And then in contrast, 2PM said that they meant to represent the most energetic, party-ready time of the day. Feels very senior center to say that 2PM is when it's time to party. But that's what they said. 2AM's fandom is the I Am, meant to be combined with the 2PM fandom name The Hottest, so I Am The Hottest, you could say. And The Hottest is also a name meant to represent contrast of 2AM, you're just in deep in thought, and then suddenly think the party is hot and poppin' at 2PM. <laughs> we I named their fandom R-U-I because we is actually the 17th of the 28 main constellations, and then RU is the 16th. So 16 and 17, they're back to back basically. So it has layered meanings here. Lovelies named their fandom the loveliness, spelled like love Linus. So I guess that's kind of cute and wholesome if you think that it's kind of like, almost like you're fans of the Peanuts gang with Linus, the character who carries the blanket around. So that's not a bad association. It's supposed to mean love in us about how people show love to each other. 15 with an ampersand is actually pronounced 15 and, and the fandom is the dreamers. The ampersand is meant to represent their ability to add on to their success going forward from the age of 15. Ironically, they are no longer a group, so how much they added after the ampersand is not much. Here are two that really drive me up a wall that I have been pronouncing wrong, and I'm just mad because I insist that 
it sounds better the way I pronounce it, frankly. E-X-I-D, that's how it's spelled and pronounced. It is not exit as in exit with a D, it's just E-X-I-D, which stands for exceed in dreaming. And the fandom is called Lego for no particular reason. Then there's F-X, who my inner math nerd is crying about because they don't say F of X. But in math, it's F of X. That's what the parentheses are. They're an of. Anyway, I can yell about that more another day. But they are FX without saying F of X. The F is supposed to be for flower. And then the X is supposed to represent the female chromosomes. As well as just like infinite possibilities. Like insert whatever you want into the X. Mathematically, this would be flower of X. Read into that what you want. And then the fandom is me, you. M-E letter U. We're just going to now talk about some that don't fit in either category of good or bad, but are just most noteworthy to finish off this list. By the way, I apologize. I think I've been saying I'm doing 100 names. I'm actually doing 150, but I promise it'll stay interesting. So let's discuss these band and fandom names. Weekly, spelled with three E's instead of two, which my autocorrect feature always gets irritated about. Their fandom is the daily, which is, to me, a really cute... Thing with the weekly and the daily, but my autocorrect feature is really annoying me, and that's why this name band name cannot officially be on my thumbs up list. Saturday named their fandom the Sunday. High Four named their fandom the High Five. My Teen their fandom was called the Youth. U apostrophe T H, which I thought was pretty clever. My t- My Teen and then Youth. Like a movie, that band named their fans the Popcorn. I don't know how to feel about that one. UNB named their fandom U N Me. JBJ stands for Just Be Joyful, which is a really cute name for a band, but then they just named their fans The Joyful, which is also kind of cute, but again, I'm not a fan of when the fandom name is a word that I hear all the time in other contexts too. Woods, spelled with a Z instead of an S, named his fans the Moods, spelled with a Z instead of an S. T-O-O, yes, it's pronounced T-O-O, but looks like two. They named their fandom the Together. Beast, sometimes spelled like the word beast in all caps, other times spelled B number two, S-T. It's an acronym for Boys of East Standing Tall. And then the fandom is Beauty, so it's Beauty and the Beast which I kind of like. But again, like with my name and my girl, I'm not a fan of when it, it's assumed that it's just a bunch of girls that are fans of them. So that's my one issue with it. Hello Venus, they named their fandom Hello Cupid, which could be cute, but is also a little weird if you know the mythology because Venus is the goddess of love, so that's great. Cupid is the god of desire and is often portrayed as Venus's son. So the fandom is like their children. TXT stands for Tomorrow Together or Tomorrow By Together, Tomorrow Times Together. I've heard it all, but it's just abbreviated to TXT. And then the fandom are the MOAs, M-O-A, which is supposed to stand for Moments of Alwaysness. VIX, I kind of like as a name, but of course it makes me think of VIX, like vapor rubber or whatever. But it's also, to me, kind of a cool, interesting name in other contexts. They named their fandom the Starlights, which I also like. My issue with it is just the acronym feels unnecessary. V-I-X-X here is supposed to stand for value in excellus, excelsis, E-X-C-E-L-S-I-S, like value in the highest degree, basically. Six, C-I-X, their fandom is the fix, faith in X, and then the bandom name is like complete in X, like complete in the unknown, we are comfortable with this uncertainty. And then the fandom is meant to be like that missing puzzle piece to them. Victon named their fandom Alice, which is an acronym here for Always We Love The Voice. Card, K-A-R-D, is not just a name. It actually stands for each of the members gets their own role in this. King, Ace, Joker, and Hidden, like the hidden card, but different capitalization. So The K is for King, A is for Ace, the R is for the R in Joker, and the D is for the D in Hidden. And then the fandom itself is also called Hidden Card, which they they say is actually meant to be open to interpretation why they name the fandom that. Uptension looks like it's spelled up lotion with the number 10 in there, but it's actually Uptension, which is supposed to be Unbelievable Perfect 10. And then the fandom, Honey 10 is supposed to reference the person uptension is falling for is you honey 10 lotion is funnier to me because a lot of their title tracks sound like lotions right blue rose 
that's enough lotion, right? And, I mean, they should market this as official merch. You got Blue Rose, you got Candyland, you got Destiny. I mean, there's a lot of material to work with here. New East, spelled that it looks like newest, but it's New East, N-U apostrophe E-S-T, stands for New Established Style and Tempo. And then the fandom is Love which is actually, well, it's pronounced love, but it's spelled with, like, it looks like an upside-down V. It's a Hangul spelling of New East. JJCC stands for Jackie Chan Joint Culture. It's a group that came from Jackie Chan Group Media. And then the fandom are the Keys. This is actually a group created by the Jackie Chan. It was never officially, officially corroborated, but apparently Jackie Chan is thought to have, yes, the Jackie Chan, been the person who judged people in the audition rounds and then officially decided on and made the final decisions about recruiting members for this group. He's also rumored to have actually created the concept behind the group and everything. He was like the Simon Cowell to One Direction as he is to JJCC. And this group was said to be a nod to Jackie Chan, as well as, like, a sign that they wanted to join cultures because this is a K-pop group promoting a Chinese movie star. What a lot of people don't know is that Jackie Chan's not just in, like, fighting movies and, and acting otherwise. He's actually been a C-pop artist for decades. He has over 25 albums, and he sings a bunch of other songs, too, that are, like, theme songs and ending credit scene songs and things like that that may be part of soundtracks and you had no idea it was Jackie Chan. Cherry Bullet. Their fandom, Lullet, which is supposed to be pronounced actually more like roulette, like Lulet. And so that's a shortened version, they say, of saying love Cherry Bullet. So roulette, bullet, I get it, but I also, I never really honestly care for the name Cherry Bullet as a group because it just makes me think of Cherry Bomb, which is already an NCT concept. It's C is it literally translates to something along the lines of you have everything you want right are you okay are you good you got everything you need or you got it or i got it you know i got this that kind of thing and then the fandom is the mid z which comes from the word trust we are going to finish off this list of stories and meanings and general commentary regarding different k-pop group names and some fun j-pop and c-pop group names in their origin stories as well we're going to continue this conversation next week on part two, so stay tuned for that, as well as some other totally unrelated themed episodes next week. Thank you for listening, and I will talk to you all soon.